hello guys and welcome back to my kitchen so today i am showing you how to make this delicious stuffed bread so if you're interested just keep watching Okay, so here are all the ingredients we're going to need for this recipe. The exact measurements will be in the description box, so have a look in there if you want them. Now, just for the flour, we don't need all purpose flour, we need bread flour. You will see that in the description box. So it's a flour that is different from the one you use for baking cakes. Here is the evaporated milk, and for that one, I have a recipe on my channel. Look up on the screen right now, up there, you will see a link, click on it, and you will see the recipe for the evaporated milk yeah now if you can get it from your local supermarket or local shop and all that that's great but if you cannot because i've had people asking me um, what is evaporated milk how to make it i can't find it in my area so i have the recipe you'll be able to make it for yourself okay so now just for precision yeah because i know some people get confused when i say a tablespoon a teaspoon and all that so these are measuring spoons that you find everywhere you can buy them now if you have them that's very good that means that you probably know what i'm talking about when i say measuring spoons a uh, tablespoon or teaspoons but if you don't have them this is what i mean when i say a tablespoon this is the spoon i refer to this normal spoon that you use to eat your rice to drink your soup or things like that and when i say a teaspoon this is what i mean by a teaspoon the normal spoon you use to drink your tea or to drink your coffee or something like that this is it yeah so okay now we're gonna start the cooking the bread so in your bowl you're gonna put all the ingredients and here i am using instant yeast so my yeast does not need to be proofed before i add it to my flour i can put it straight in there that's why it's called instant yeast so there's a difference now when you put your yeast make sure you put it opposite to the salt don't put the yeast next to the salt because the salt might deactivate your yeast yeah and your bread is not going to rise properly so that's why you see that i put the yeast on one side and the salt on the opposite side now we're going to put all the ingredients in there and we're gonna start the mixing when it comes to the milk as well make sure your milk is warm not hot not cold warm that means the temperature that you'll be able to give your baby for example yeah the temperature that you'll be able to give your baby to drink yeah that's what i call warm that's just a reference you can use it as a reference yeah so that is it we put all the ingredients and we're gonna start mixing if you don't have a mixing uh, a stand mixer then you can use your hand once you put all the ingredients like that use a spatula mix it and once everything is incorporated very well use your hand to knead the dough yeah this is it we're gonna knead it and then we're gonna remove it when it's ready So now that our bread dough is ready, I have a bowl here, you can see the oil there, it's just a tiny bit of oil that I put in there, we're going to rub it just to, you know, uh, spread it around the bowl so that when we put our dough in there, the dough is not going to stick to the bowl, yeah, so that's why we are spreading the oil in there and all we're going to do is to put our dough in there, we're going to cover it with a cling film, yeah, or anything you like, just cover it and allow it to rise.
So now that my bread is ready, I covered it with a clean film. I'm going to cover it with a clean kitchen towel as well. And what I usually do for it to rise quicker, because where I am, the weather is not that hot. I put it in my oven, yes, and I, I, I leave it there to rise. I don't put the oven on though. The oven is not on. I just leave it in there to, for it to rise quickly. And in about an hour, it should be ready. It has to double or triple in size. Okay, so now here, while the bread dough is rising, we have our ingredient for our minced beef. We're gonna start cooking. Look in the description box, you have everything. Here I have my pan ready and I'm putting my minced beef in there. You can use minced chicken, minced turkey, or you can even use fish. But today we are using uh, minced beef. So we're going to just cook the minced beef. I like to cook it. This one is only 5% fat in there. There's only 5% fat. So I will need a little bit of oil. Usually when there's like 25% fat or when the fat is high in my minced beef, I just fry it until all the oil comes out. I don't add any oil, but today the fat is not enough. It's just 5% fat. So I'm going to need a little bit of oil, which I added. And once the minced is already fried nicely fried not necessarily 100% but I'm adding my chopped onions and garlic and I'm gonna fry the whole thing together and then I'm gonna season it as well for the seasoning I'm going to use black pepper I'm going to use all-purpose seasoning I'm going to add some salt I'm going to add some mixed herbs yeah you can season it anyhow you like it just do it to your taste i'm doing it to my taste you can do it as i'm doing it but you can do it to your taste as well because you're the one eating it you're the one who's going to enjoy it yes <laughs> just use my cooking as a guide yeah as a guide not as a must do <laughs> and season it anyhow you like it so now we're gonna fry the whole thing together and we are going to add a little bit of water to it we're going to add tomato as well but the tomato i'm not adding much i'm adding just a tiny little bit of tomato this is just one tomato that i'm adding in there you can skip the tomato if you like but i added tomato to mine and we're going to add a little bit of water not much we don't want it to last too long on the fire so the mint is already cooked it cooks very very quick so i'm going to add just a tiny bit of water like maybe three tablespoons of water and then we're going to cover and allow it to cook on low heat for around 10 to 15 minutes So now that our meat is ready, we're going to add our chopped parsley. This is chopped parsley there. I'm going to mix it and that is it. My food is ready. Once I add the chopped parsley, I'm not cooking it anymore. I'll just switch off the heat and that is it. My meat is ready. So all we have to do now is to allow it to cool down completely so we can put it in our bread. And voila, after one hour, look at the bread dough. Wow, the bread dough has doubled in size. I believe it's even tripled in size. Yes, my bowl is completely full and that's good because it means that the bread is definitely ready and it's going to be delicious so all i'm going to do here is to deflate it a bit and then i'm going to spread it on my worktop yeah on my work area and i'm going to divide it into small 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 bits so it's up to you the size you want to make them you can make them big you can make them small you can make them tiny it's completely up to you so i just divided them and i'm going to make a, a bowl yeah with each of them just to get them ready so that when i start rolling them and filling them it's gonna be quick i don't have to do all that every time yeah
here i have my tray this is the tray i'm going to bake the bread in and i lined it with a parchment paper so or baking paper it's up to you but it's just so that it doesn't stick to my tray so what i like to do because the tray keeps rolling off on its own on its on itself yeah so just to hold it on the tray the paper i mean just to hold it on the tray i just stick some you know some of the dough i use some of the dough to stick it on there so this is what it's looking like this is a little trick if you didn't know you can try it that will help a lot we have our cheese we have our minced beef that has cooled down and now we are ready to roll our bread So here I'm just going to show you three different shapes in which you can do your stuffed bread yeah you can use just one shape but i'm just giving you ideas yeah so i'm going to do it in three different shapes because like i told you when i'm in the kitchen i have fun all i do is fun i make everything into fun because i enjoy it so much so yes i decided to do it in three different shapes so i will show you how i do it and you choose to do yours anyhow you like it so what i did here i'm going to make a, a round shape so as I rolled my dough flat completely and I filled it with my minced beef and some cheese. You can add cheese or you might skip the cheese. It's up to you, yeah? It's completely down to you. So this is how I'm doing it. When I finish, I put all the dough together and I'll press it so that it sticks together and I'll roll it on my surface, on my flat surface until the bottom is completely sealed, yeah? yeah and i try to make the shape look nice it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna allow it to rise a second time so when you rise a second time it's gonna make the shape look better yeah because it's gonna grow so don't worry too much about the shape to be perfect it doesn't have to be So this second shape is more of an oval bread shape kind of, yeah. So that's why you saw I rolled my, my, my dough in a long, in oval shape and I put the meat in there. This one, I'm not adding no cheese to it. It's just to give you, to show you and give you ideas and all that. So I'll pinch all of the dough together, make sure it's stuck together nicely and I'll try and tuck in, you know, the, 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 the sides inside i don't know how to explain it but obviously you're watching so you can see what i am doing i'm gonna try my best and tuck everything in yeah turn it around and try and roll it as well to seal the bottom yeah and then try and get the shape to look nice as much as i can yeah but i don't stress on it looking too nice it doesn't have to be perfect <laughs> so this is it and the third shape is gonna be more of a meat pie shape kind of yeah empanadas shape kind of yeah
So now we are done, all we have to do is to cover our bread with a clean kitchen towel and allow it to rise again for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, we come back, we beat one egg and we use that one egg to brush our bread. And this egg brush is gonna give our bread a nice golden color. It's gonna make our bread look beautiful and popping, yes? <laughs> and once we are done, we're gonna sprinkle the bread with some sesame seed. You don't have to, but it's just me doing that. But it's delicious and sesame seed is very good for your health as well. This is one way to consume it, yeah? That is it, so yeah. Now we're going to put it in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 minutes and our bread will be ready. Yummy, yummy. Thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you like it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share and see you in my next video. Bye.